Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today I'm totally nerding out. I, I get to do something really cool that I've always wanted to do. Um, and this may confuse you. What the heck am I doing here in a tree? So we are in Brunswick, Georgia on uh, St. Simon's Island. This is a very special place for American naval historians. By the time Battleship New Jersey was built, the United States always had the dominant navy in the world, but that wasn't always the case. In the 1790s, the new country didn't even rank on a top 10 chart of most powerful navies. So they looked to build ships with greater individual fighting power than any of their contemporaries. And that is why they looked to St. Simon's Island. This is the home of the live oak. So this tree is one of the ones that the builders of ships like Constitution looked at and decided wasn't quite the right shape. The Constitution was the dominant ship of her day because of this super dense live oak, southern live oak, the state tree of Georgia, uh, that they used in the ship's construction. In particular, this made a lot of the framing and knees uh, that forms the structure of those original six frigates. The six frigates were built all over the country, as it existed at that time, and they were built with materials acquired from all over the country, from the live oaks down here in uh, Georgia, all the way up to the pine forests of Maine. So Battleship New Jersey is a gold-plated ship because while other navies tended to build their ships out of mild steel, New Jersey is built largely out of STS steel, armor plating. And likewise, Constitution was a gold-plated ship in her day because of the use of timber like this. It only grows in the southern United States from about North Carolina uh, all the way down through Florida and the, uh, and the Gulf Coast. Now, at that time, much of that was still a uh, French or Spanish possession, and so Georgia, South Carolina was really the only place that the uh, United States could find trees like this. So when you're building a wooden ship like Constitution, the first thing that happened, the brilliant designer Joshua Humphreys made a uh, half hull model of the ship, of what he wanted the ship to look like. Then you go to a molding loft and you trace out full scale drawings of the individual frames that are gonna make up this ship. Then you would uh, cut that out in some softer wood or paper, whatever the case may be, and you transport that to your forest to find a tree that's going to have an angle in it that matches your framing and uh, your hull. Well, that's all well and good. Constitution's built in Boston. They've got to get down here to Georgia. The shipbuilders got down here and, and the climate was so different from where they were used to and the mosquitoes had malaria, yellow fever, and all sorts of other uh, more tropical diseases and many of them got sick or died. And so they switched to enslaved labor for harvesting this lumber. And uh, live oak, again, a very dense and hard wood, so very difficult to cut. They're, they're trying to cut it more or less to size uh, so that they can season it before using it in the ships. Constitution earned the nickname Old Ironsides, not because there was any significant iron used in her construction, but because of this. The layers of white oak planking on top of live oak framing uh, with, with a significantly narrower uh, frame spacing than other contemporary ships made the hull so hard that uh, British projectiles hitting it simply bounced off. And that led one sailor to exclaim during the ship's battle, I believe it was with Guerriere, her first major engagement, uh, huzzah, her sides are made of iron. The name has stuck for well over 200 years at this point. So as an American naval historian, St. Simon's Island down here in Brunswick, Georgia is a mecca to me. I have never gotten a chance to see 
live oak trees before, uh, much less from the very same groves that uh, the timbers for ships like Constitution and Constellation, President, United States, Chesapeake, and Congress were harvested from. Uh, so this is very exciting for me. Thank you guys for coming on this trip. What do you think from all of naval history made the United States Navy such a dominant force? Is it some material or technology like live oak? Uh, I think live oak was incredibly important in establishing the traditions of the early Navy, which still continues on today. Uh, or do you think it was some other material, tactic, or technology that uh, the Navy has used over the last more than 200 years? Let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State and also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. In particular, the donations you guys have given us have allowed us to travel to cool and unique spaces uh, that you might not think of as having any naval history at all. I really appreciate that support. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue to support the channel and our eccentric trips. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel and our museum. Thanks for watching.